everybody, Rex Arcana here, Static Industrial Television, with uh, truly another of the scene's icons, Ronnie Moorings from Clannis IMUX. Hi. We're here tonight, sort of uh, kicking off this new tour uh, in celebration of the re-release of Twist of Shadows, of course. So tell us a little bit about how it makes you feel to think about that record. I know like, there's... A bit of a history there, and yeah. to some, but Twist of Shadows was kind of your with sympathy. So I'm curious to see how you view that record now, so many years later. I still look fondly back to it because it's like um, the the first record I could record with a producer, and we spent a lot of time in the in the studio. It was like really like how it would be done by a major band on a major label. Right. That's just like you felt like really honored. The only thing was like. You only had 10 days for 10 tracks, so it was hard work and a lot of stress and um, you had to make on the fly decisions like, okay, yes or no, and, you know, it's like uh, every band had that same situation, so it's like that's all you knew. Look back now, it's like you're very comfortable in your own studio, do you have time to develop your sound and things like that, so, but coming from there, it's like, you know, it's a... It's, uh, that was the best stepping stone ever for a band to make. Did you, did you think you'd still be carrying on at it 30 years, 35 years later? I thought in 1985 it would last me one year and then I could, uh, would go back to my study because I actually halted my study for a year just to, okay, to experience a bit of, let's say, rock and roll and playing live and then uh, go back to, to, to university and, and do whatever. I, I never did anymore. So it just, it's just like, I can't believe it's like how long uh, it's lasting still. Talk a little bit about what it was like with 4AD in the day. I mean, we have a lot of younger viewers of Static TV that look back to that era but weren't alive to experience that was, it. That was totally exciting as well because we, at that time, we were just a, a fresh band, never without any studio experience. And Ivo, the the head of 4AD at that time, signed us uh, to record, and I think we were the first signing in two years. And I mean, you get to work with guys like John Fryer uh, and- Absolutely, yeah. Like uh, I worked twice with John Fryer on Zelbus. Like John only came in after we recorded in Scotland and he was responsible for the mixing, engineering, and especially he had a neck that he could still produce after the effect. So he could still had a good ear, like what effects you would use or resample certain drum sounds and it was like very to work with John Fry was very creative like learn a lot like how we approach sounds and uh, that was very interesting and what is your creative process now how does a song begin for you still the same as always most time 80 percent for sure is just like one sound triggering you in your head same as a smell triggers you a palate of uh, things what reminds you of so you like with a smell for example you think ah that holiday there uh, that those persons there and there and sounds uh, can do the same or at least to me it does I start with a four track so I never really played live before I was just like making tracks for yourself or like for your friends you were giving out bedroom sets. studio project yeah and and then it came into subsequent pleasures and then the, you made demos and that became then later the, the first album for 4AD and that's how you evolve. But it's like, how do you start? Most time in music and the music inspires the lyrics.
so many years without Clan of Zymox shows in the U.S. and now two tours in the same year. How did that come about? I think we found an agency. <laughs> Finally, we, we did actually, we, to be honest, we did a uh, shows in the USA, but it was like uh, just like uh, three or four shows. And then we went back again because, to be honest, I don't really like long tours. So this is like the maximum I wanted. That's why we split it in parts, one, two, three, four, uh, but it's all like around two weeks and I uh, don't really want to stay away longer from home. And we saw you in Mexico City, of course, uh, at Oris Festival. Is there a favorite city or a favorite country like you that you like to visit? Well, you, you mentioned Mexico and that's, I particularly like Mexico, yes, or South America for that fact, but same as the States. I think every country has their own specifics what you what you like and what you can get out of it and uh, culturally it's always different so i think that makes it also interesting to go to different places in different countries what is it that you like about mexico in particular our mexican viewers are going to be excited to hear the answer <laughs> well first of all the people the the, the fans who uh, uh, come to our shows they just incredible they make such i think the loudest they are the loudest in mexico city it's like, I don't know why that is, but it is a fact. Yeah. And I think there's also the largest crowd we ever played, 20,000 and something people in a big arena. Yeah. That was also amazing. post-punk and gothic industrial whatever umbrella term has obviously you can see by the crowd that comes out to your shows to some people you are i mean literally uh, a living legend of the scene yeah but i never think about that it's like i can't see myself like that so it's like to me it's like i just do what i do and i'm glad everyone's coming to show that's really important when you play live yeah. people appreciate the music and i Indeed, I do see there are sometimes various generations in the audience, yeah. which is only great because yeah. like, I would hate to cater just for one specific audience. Like, I think music should be or is universal. Thinking about the future for Clan of Zymox, after the tour, you'll go back, you'll take some time off, maybe start to write new music? I definitely start to write new music and, you know, I still hope one day I'll write a magic track, uh, which I never written yet, so. And that's what keeps you going, the pursuit of that perfect it's, pop song? It's the carrot of every musician, I think. Yeah. It's the holy grail. The Holy Grail, looking for the Holy Grail with Ronnie Moorings from Clan of Zymox. Static Industrial TV.